flowing on the things of God.
you receive this this morning. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can't carry on. Raised in His power, the weak become strong. His strength is perfect. His strength is perfect. Sing that again. His strength.
we love you. We exalt your name in all the earth. May your kingdom be established through our praise. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty. We sang this morning about God being a God of a turnaround. Yeah, we sang about a God who gives us strength when we have no strength. Who needs a turnaround? Who needs more strength? Raise your hand. We're simply going to ask God for it. We're people that are bold enough to call upon the name of the Lord. Yeah, let's believe for it right now, pure and simple. Raise your hands to God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and will continue to be in our lives. We call upon you as God's people today. Father, many of us need to turn around. And you turn it around and around. And what seems to be upside down becomes right side up. What seems to be backwards becomes frontward. Turn around, Father. Those who are crying out to you for a turnaround. Honor your people today who love you. Glorify your name through it. Father, we're a people that need more and more of your strength. And that's nothing more of your power sticking to us like glue. We need you to stick with us like glue, Father. We don't take for granted just because it's available that it's ours. We ask for it. We ask boldly for it, Father. We ask, Lord, with an expectation that you're going to strengthen us, Father. You're going to give us overcoming power. Father, you're going to do exceeding abundantly above anything we ask or think. So we ask, Lord, for the miracles that we seek. We ask for the healings that we seek. We ask for the restoration that we seek. Father, we ask for the reconciliation of families that we seek. Father, we ask for the healing of finances. Father, in the name of Jesus, we boldly ask you, God. And you're a God that comes through every time for us. Father, continue to anoint the word that goes forth today. Continue to encourage us. Thank you that you are the Lord God Almighty. 
was and is and continues to be in our lives. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the name of the Lord forever and ever. God bless you as you take your seats. I just thought we all needed that today. Glory to God. Helps ministry are in the aisles. If you want to participate in this time of worship and through giving, please raise your hand. They'll give you an offering on board. We remind people, and we remind us, for the, especially for those who come on for the first time, this is our time where we worship God through our uh, tithes and offerings. You feel that, especially after after that time with God, you feel led to sow into that. That you can you can mail a check or a money order to through three eight hundred West Chicago, Redford, Michigan four eight two three nine. That's Detroit World Outreach. Or on the screen you'll see uh, you'll see some other uh, directions how you can give severe securely online. You can obviously uh, download the DWO app, for Apple Android Store. I love it. I keep. Uh, talking about because it's a good way to get seed in the ground quickly. If you want to uh, download your phone, you can also text this on your phone, and this is on your screen. Text DWOAPP, DWO app to 833 774 6233. Praise God. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna it's hot in here, but you know something? It's hot with the presence of God. It's hot with the presence of God. It's red hot with the presence of God. And I tell you, even as the word goes forth, when we, when we break bread of communion, take the presence of God with you today. I encourage you to do that. That every and I don't care what's going. Take it with you. Take it with you. His presence is greater than anything anything that will come your way today. In Jesus' name, let's all stand. Hallelujah. I left my phone there, but everybody else, go ahead and lift up your offering to God. And Father, in Jesus' name, we don't take this time lightly. Father, you, you, basically, you basically have met us, Father, and you've hugged us with your presence. Now, we extend this worship to you by our giving. Father, I ask, Lord, you consecrate and want this time in Jesus' name. Let's come to the altar and give. give from a cheerful heart because your word says that you love a cheerful giver. We thank you, Lord, that you are not an adder. You are a multiplier of our seed. We thank you, Lord, that we planted this seed in good ground, that you multiply it 30, 60, and 100 fold to everybody who's here and online watching. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Amen.
I just want to talk with you, Father. I just want to walk with you, Father. I just want to get wrapped up in you, Father. Keep me close to you, Father. For in your presence is the fulfillment of everything that I need. Father, we just thank you. Father, we glorify you, Father. Pastor Mike talked about a turnaround. I got two words for you. Never lose sight of the wonder of God. When you get wrapped up in his wonder, it will keep you on track. It will keep you focused. And there you will find the fulfillment of everything that you need. We got to stop allowing the world or circumstances to cause us to lose sight of the wonder of God. We're talking about God. Soul emperor and creator of the universe, the I am that I am, everything that you will ever need in that present moment, everything that you will need in the future, everything that you have ever needed in your past. Get wrapped up in the wonder of God. Second word is this. You understand faith, we got faith. But when you're going through the whole body armor of God, yes, shield of faith. That's our defense. But we get so wrapped up and stand on the defense that we forget to go on the offense. turnaround that you need is wrapped up in the offense that you ever need is right here. The order goes shield of faith, sword of the spirit. Start equipping your sword of the spirit more. Stop just relying on faith. Faith without works is dead. If you don't pick up the sword, you cannot fully operate with faith. They go hand in hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. It's an honor and a privilege to be before you all again on this Thursday. So grateful for having the opportunity. One of the things I need to remember today is don't lose sight of the wonder of God. Get wrapped up in it. Get lost in it. It's okay. It's okay to get lost there. It's a safe place. Amen. All right, today we are going to continue our series. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are still going through the five crowns produced by the cross. I want to give honor, honor to God, thanking him for the opportunity to stand before you. Honor to my spiritual father, Bishop CJ. Thank you. Honor to my mom, honor to Pastor Johnny, honor to Mama Gail, Pastor Mike, and I want to honor all of y'all for being here in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the power of your word. We ask you to anoint your word as seed in our lives. We ask you to anoint our hearts as good ground that we may receive your word. Father God, Lord God Almighty, we need to see you in your word. Show us to continually be wrapped in your wonder, Father God. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you will anoint me as a gift to your body. Hide me in the ultimate gift that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I do believe that we will receive life-changing, destiny-accelerated, kingdom-building, real, relevant, and relational revelation of you through your word, by your spirit, under your anointed Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need a set of notes, our awesome health ministry has the notes available for you. If you do not, raise your hand. We will get a set of notes to you. Bishop CJ, it is an honor and a privilege to give you my personal set of notes. Because I understand that most, most, people, most people won't understand them anyway in Jesus' name. You got to understand there's a, grace, there's a grace that comes off of when you submit. I submitted to him as my spiritual father so he knows I have the ability to now tap into the anointing that's on his life in Jesus' name. Which also leads me to instruct y'all and encourage y'all in Jesus' name. If you haven't become a member, become a member. Reach out to Pastor Mike at MDK 
at DWO.org. You can do the classes online. And if you want to do them in person, reach out with Pastor Mike and see how you can get connected. That's what we talk about when we say get connected, stay connected. You got to become a member. Everybody say, I'm going to become a member. Praise God. Appreciate the five that said it in Jesus' name. All right. So a quick recap. We talked about last week, we, we, we've talked about the crown of life, and we talked about the beginning of the crown of righteousness. The crown of life, also referred to as the martyr's crown. I gave you all that. Then I, it's reserved for those who love God. I gave you all scriptures, Revelations 2, chapter 9 and 10, I mean, verses 9 and 10, excuse me, James chapter 1, verse 12. We talked about how do we endure testing and temptation so that we can receive the crown of life. I just told you all, you guys, you got to obey God. Everybody say, I got to obey God. Now, we're going we to say it with a little bit more boldness and conviction than that. We, all, we talked about having the sword of the spirit, so everybody say, I got to obey God. There you go. We talked about the three ways that you can't. It's more than this, but you, we talked about three ways you can't obey God. By loving God, <clears throat> having a relationship with Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is a major factor of that. And we also talked about the Bible. I also gave you all the revelation that there are two versions of the Word of God, Jesus and the Bible. If you want to go back and refer to that, look, <clears throat> look at the last week's message, and then you, you know, share it with somebody. Share the stream with five people if you're watching online. Get to call in and request for a CD if you want to get a CD, and then give it out to five people in Jesus' name. So I gave you the breakdown of that, and I'm going to go through it today. Then we talked about the crown of righteousness. The crown of righteousness will be given to those who love his appearing and live lives anticipating, anticipating the Lord Jesus Christ's return. And I ask y'all, are you in anticipation for the Lord Jesus Christ's return? Are you living your life like Jesus will come back one day? That's the question that you got to ask yourself. I also told you that does not mean that you will be flawless. If you could have been flawless, God would have never had to send Jesus. You will never be flawless. What does it say? He says, be perfect like your father in heaven is perfect. You want to be perfect. What does perfect mean? Perfect means that you are fit for the calling that he has on your life. Perfect doesn't mean flawless. Does that make sense? Praise God. So and we, we had to be very clear that we only have righteousness through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. It is his righteousness covering us. What does the Bible say? He intercedes for us daily. So if you got mad at that person that cut you off, and you wanted to cuss them out, and you allowed the flesh to rise on up, Jesus was covering you while he was still in heaven. For, no, Father, forgive him. Remember, I went to the cross in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's get into today's. Let's finish righteousness. And so our main scriptures, which I'm not going to read them, you got them on your paper. You want to go through these notes. If you have them in copy in your hand, save them. Go through them later in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 2, Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 and 26. Now, I purposely had, when I was printing these out for you guys, I purposely had, I left the five crowns on there. So the notes may seem a little bit longer than, than normal, but I left the scriptures on there for y'all, and I left the, the five crowns on there for y'all so y'all can have a reference to go back to. So there ain't going to be no excuse if somebody asks you, what's the five crowns? You're going to be like, oh, wait, that I had them on my paper. I just didn't study them. Amen. Crown of righteousness. Crown of righteousness is for those who love Christ and they look forward to, so you have to live like. Everybody say live like. Jesus is coming again. Now let's get into the Greek. I know how much y'all love the Greek in Jesus' name. Let's get into the Greek. Righteousness. Dikaios one. That means justice, justness, righteousness, righteousness of which God is the source of, which God is the author of. By practically a divine righteousness. Everybody say divine righteousness. Now everybody do your hands like this when you say it. Say divine righteousness. There you go. I, I, I grew up watching uh, karate movies, so you, if, you, if you heard, if you picked up on a little accent in there, that's what that was. I got that from Bruce Lee movie, in Jesus' name. Okay. So we must, now watch this. We're talking about a righteousness of which God is the source or author of. It says a divine righteousness. We must hunger and thirst for righteousness. How do we hunger and thirst for righteousness? Living a life like the Lord Jesus Christ will come again and that he will reward you 
for living a life this way. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger for righteousness, and who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fulfilled. Hunger, when you look at it in the Greek, hunger means desire earnestly. That word thirst also means desire earnestly. Everybody say desire earnestly. If you desire earnestly righteousness, which is also justice, you will have everything you need from a spiritual standpoint and everything you need from a physical one. Now, I raise your hands if everybody want to have everything that they need from a physical standpoint and a spiritual standpoint. I raise both of my hands in Jesus' name. Now, watch this. Matthew chapter 14, verse 20. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterwards the disciple picked up the 12 baskets of leftovers. Not only will you have everything that you need, there will be leftovers to share with others. Let me say that again. Not only will you have everything that you need from a spiritual and physical standpoint, there will be more left over to share with others. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, God's righteousness, be willing to follow that righteousness. God will make sure that you have everything that you need. We just got to follow righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Now, watch this. The people at the Sermon on the Mount, they were seeking righteousness. The people at, at about Bethsaida, they were also seeking righteousness. They were seeking righteousness. Now, once one was filled, they were fulfilled spiritually. The other was fulfilled spiritually and naturally. So Jesus, at the Sermon on the Mount, this is where he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. This is where Jesus first time saying it. It's in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. So at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus, not only did he teach righteousness, he displayed righteousness. So that when the time came back around again for the feeding at the 5,000, not only did Jesus teach and instruct, he also said, okay, disciples, I have already shown you how to live righteous. I have already shown you how to display righteousness. You go feed the 5,000. So he taught and he showed. Everybody say he taught and he showed. Also say Jesus always led by example. Praise God. Now y'all ready for some revelation? I got some revelation for y'all. Y'all ready for it? Here's some revelations. We talked about the disciple feeding the 5,000, right? There's also another of feeding, which is the 4,000. The 5,000 were the Jewish people. The 4,000 were the Gentiles. What did Paul say in Romans chapter 1, verse 16? That everybody who believes, first the Jew and then the Gentile. So Jesus and the disciples had to feed the Jews first with the 5,000. Then he fed the Gentiles with the 4,000. To the Jew first. And then the Gentile. Everybody do your hands like this and say to the Jew first and to the Gentile. Now watch this. What is one of the things that Jesus fed both parties or the disciples at the 5,000 fed as an extension of Jesus? What is one of the things that he fed them? It was bread. Bread. Who is Jesus? The bread of life. I am going to show you how to display my righteousness. I am going to show you that I am righteousness, and then I'm going to show you how to extend my righteousness to others. I am going to give you the bread. I am going to give you myself as an example. And then I'm going to tell you to go out and pre reproduce what I just did. Righteousness. Jesus, bread of life. As an example, broken, not torn. They broke the pieces of bread, and they passed them out. Righteousness displayed. Showing you that I am going to give my life as an example of righteousness so that you can, in turn, take that righteousness and run with it. Jew and then the Gentile. I am fulfilling God's promise from a position of Righteousness. And if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, you will be fulfilled spiritually and naturally. 
Now, I could have gave a breakdown of the numbers of the 5, 5, and the 12 at the 5,000 or the 7 and 7 at the 4,000, but that's another teaching for another day. But it was always about righteousness. Everybody say it's about righteousness. You have a choice. Oh, no, y'all could do better than that. Everybody say it's about righteousness. Now, watch this. You have a choice. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20. Today, I've given you a choice between life and death. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you have made, oh, that you would choose life so that your descendants might live, so that you and your descendants might live. Excuse me, verse 20. You can make the choice by loving the Lord your God and obeying him and committing yourselves firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land that the Lord, the Lord swore to give to your ancestors. Crown of righteousness is for those who love God. I have an opportunity to live a life that says I love God and I'm in, in anticipation of the Lord Jesus Christ's return. You have an opportunity. Everybody say it's an opportunity. Matthew chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. If you hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Verse 26. And what does it benefit you if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? If any, is anything worth more than your soul? For the Son of Man will come with the angels of glory and of his Father and will judge people accordingly to their deeds. You have an opportunity, but you got to receive it. You have to believe it and you have to receive it. It's all about opportunity. You have to believe Jesus, love Jesus, while eagerly waiting for his return. That's what you have to do. Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 through 21. But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Everybody say, citizens of heaven. And we are eagerly awaiting his return as our Savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into a glorious bodies of his own, using the same power of which he will bring everything under his control. You know, I got, I got, a, I got a very vivid imagination. I grew up in what I call the Muppet Babies era. You know, when your world looks kind of weird and you wish that you were there, just, you know, make believe and you can be there anywhere in Jesus' name. What am I really saying? I have a vision. God has given me a vision of heaven, of a, council, of a meeting of the councils, and us being deposited with everything that he wanted to accomplish in the earth realm before he sent us here. Now, if you can grab that revelation, you understand that that's why you were strategically and intentionally sent here by God for the time that you're alive right now. You're not born at any other point in time. You're alive right now because I, he says, I want to deposit something through the earth realm through you. And guess what one of those things are, is? Righteousness. It's always been about righteousness. Because if Christ Jesus was, was wrapped in righteousness, covering us with righteousness, we are to display that same righteousness. What does it say? Firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. Jesus was the firstborn. We are the secondborn. It's always about righteousness. Everybody say righteousness. Now everybody say righteousness check. Now on to the crown of glory. The crown of glory is for those who faithfully teach the word of God. The crown of glory will be given to those who instruct in others in the word of God. Those who shepherd the flock entrusted to them like the Lord Jesus Christ did slash does. So they have to be unselfishly loving while being a good example to others. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 through 4. Care for, that word means shepherd, the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly. Not for what you will get out of it, but... For because you are eager to serve God. Verse 3, don't lord it over people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. Verse 4, and when the great shepherd appears, he will, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. There goes those two words again. Remember I told y'all, you want glory and honor over power and status. There go those two words again. Honor and glory. Everybody say honor and glory. Now watch this. Before you turn your ears off, does that say pastors? Or does it say shepherds? It says shepherds, right? Now a shepherd can't, a pastor is wrapped up under a shepherd. Don't get me wrong. 
you know, a shepherd can be a pastor, it can be an elder, deacon, ministry lead, small group leaders, etc. It's a broad horizon. Everybody do your hands like this and say, it's a broad horizon. Now watch this. The crown of glory is for those who answer the call of leadership and shepherd them well. It does not specifically say pastors. It says the crown of glory is for those who answer the call of leadership and shepherd them well. It says shepherd. Now let's go back into the Greek. I know y'all love the Greek. The word shepherd in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 2 in the Greek is poimaino. Poimaino. That's the word in the Greek, which means to act as a shepherd. I shepherd, tend, herd, hence, I rule, govern. Everybody say, I rule, govern. Now watch this. We all have a spiritual realm of authority. We all have a spiritual realm of influence a portion of the spiritual kingdom of God that has been entrusted to us as kings, queens, and priests. Y'all remember when Bishop CJ talked about kings and, uh, uh, kings and priests? We all have a portion of it. Now watch this. We have a responsibility to be leaders over that we have been entrusted to by God. We're talking about shepherds. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10, we won't go through the whole, whole thing. Verse 4, you are coming to Christ, who is a living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. Verse 5 is the key. And you are living stones that God is building into a spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest. He's talking about you. He says it, you are his holy priest. Through the meditation of Jesus Christ, you are offered, I mean, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. And then I'll let you read the rest of it. I'll, I'll give you verse 6. As the scriptures say, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. Anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. I'll let you read the rest of it for yourself. Romans chapter 8, verses 29 through 30. Watch this. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. Verse 30, and having chose them, he called them to come to him, and having called them, he gave them right standing with himself, and he has given them right standing, he gave them his glory. There's that word glory again. Honor and glory over power and status. Shepherds, everybody say shepherds. Kings are shepherds. Queens are shepherds. Parents are shepherds. Business owners are shepherds. Managers are shepherds. Older siblings are shepherds. I hope you catch the revelation on that one, on why older siblings are shepherds. I'll give you a hint. Jesus. All right. Pastors are shepherds. The list goes on. Shepherds have a responsibility. Everybody say shepherds have a responsibility. Now watch this. The English definition says a shepherd guides or directs in a particular direction. Wow. A shepherd guides and directs in a particular direction. It does not specifically say pastors. Shepherds. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16. Now watch this. We're talking about guiding in a, in a particular direction. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all those to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. That's not talking about a single, a single individual. That's not talking about pastors shining your light. That's not talking about elders shining your light. It's telling you to shine your light. Jesus has entered our hearts if we answered the call when he knocked on the door. Jesus has entered our hearts. He has flipped the switch and he has gave us a light to display. Jesus has come on the inside and he has flipped the light switch. And he says, okay, now you display that light to the rest of the world. Well, your influence. Some of you will influence Thousands, some people will influence millions. 
we all have a spiritual realm of influence that has been entrusted to us by God as shepherds. We're talking about salt and light. Revelations. Now watch this. So we talked about the light. So that light will bring glory to the Father. If you display that light, it will bring glory to the Father. That's why we have to be careful of the light that we are displaying. Because you can't be displaying the wrong type of light. And you don't want to do that. You want to be an example. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 through 6. And from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things. The first to rise from the dead, the ruler of all the kings of the world. All glory to him who loves us and has freed us from the sins by shedding his blood. He has made us a kingdom of priests. So you don't have to take my word for it. What does the Bible say? Jesus has made us a kingdom of priests. For God his Father. Jesus has made us a kingdom of priests for God our Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Glory and honor over power and status. Do you want to display righteousness as an example of how Christ displayed righteousness? Now, as I get ready to close, the crown of glory is for those who faithfully teach the word of God. If you need a scripture that, that, that applies to parents, what do you talk about? You parents, teach this to your children. Teach these instructions to your children. Write them on your forehead, tie them around your heads, write them on the doorposts. You, for those who faithfully teach the word of God. We have all been instructed and we have all been given a light by Jesus to teach the word of God to somebody. The Bible also talks about know the word so that your, your response will be the proper response for everybody who hears it. Power and life of death is in the tongue. We can go through a whole series about that. But we have all been instructed to share the gospel. We have all been instructed to share the good news. What does it say? The crown of glory is for those instructing others in the, in the word of God. The crown of glory is for those who shepherd the flocks entrusted to them like the Lord Jesus Christ did slash does. We have to do it unselfishly loving while being a good example to others. The crown of glory is for those who answer the call so the crown of glory is for those who answer the call. Now raise your hand if you're willing to answer the call. You just got to be willing to answer the call. It says the crown of glory is for those who answer the call, willing to be used by God, willing to instruct others, willing to teach others. In Jesus' name, amen. All heads bowed, all eyes closed. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that you are our God and our Father. Father, we worship you, we honor you, we praise you, Heavenly Father. If you're out there and you're watching online, you will watch this later. If you're in-house and you say, I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I want to. If that's you, you say, I want to accept Jesus, I want to get to know Jesus, I understand now his, his righteousness is covering me, and now I want to display that righteousness to others. If that's you and you're in-house, raise your hand. If you're watching online, comment down below and we will definitely pray a prayer of salvation with you in Jesus name second appeal is this you want to rededicate your life to the Lord you say you know what I was walking with God I was on the path I was on the path of greatness I was on the path of success but then I slipped up I messed up I allowed life to cause me to lose sight of the wonder of God if that's you you want to rededicate your life to the Lord and you're in house raise your hand if you're watching online comment down below and we will definitely get, a, get an agreement with you in Jesus' name. If you need prayer for anything, you can always see us at the end of service. We will definitely pray a prayer of agreement with you. In Jesus' name, it is an honor and a privilege to be before y'all as we continue to go through this series. Love and appreciate every, every one of you. Remember, never lose sight of the wonder of God. Remember, it's about righteousness. 
Christ instructed us on righteousness, gave us an example of righteousness so that we could display that righteousness to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Pastor Mike. Glory to God. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Glory to God. Man, what's amazing is, and as we prepare for your articles for Holy Communion, if, if you need communion articles, helps ministry, wonderful team will be around. Raise your hand. We want to make sure you're served. We'll give you a few more minutes at home. Find some juice. Find a cracker, piece of bread, something that will embolize, uh, you know, symbolize rather, uh, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's so true. Without the cross, there are no crowns. We're able to wear the crowns. But as believers, what the cross did, it did what we read in Psalm 103 today. I'm going to read again because as we're remembering what Jesus did, the idea of crowning begins with him surrounding you. And because he broke his body, he shed his blood. Verse 2, Psalm 103, Amp uh, Amplified Classic. Bless affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not one of all his benefits. That's why we take Holy Community. We don't, he's the one to forget everything he surrounds us with. Forgives every one of your iniquities. Everyone. Doesn't say, okay, okay, I forgive you of robbing, okay, but I don't forgive you for having a bad mouth. He doesn't pick and choose what he forgives. Unconditional and complete. I'm, I'm going to try to be quick with this. Who heals each one of our diseases speaks for itself who redeems your life from the pit and corruption. And here it is, who beautifies, dignifies, and crowns you, or surrounds you. The crowning here means surrounding you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth, your necessity and desire, that your personal age and situation, with good so your youth is renewed like the eagle, strong, overcoming, and soaring. Because of what Jesus did, and the benefits, he doesn't want us to forget, but he wants, to, he wants us to appropriate to our lives. The crowns that we heard today, we've been hearing the last few weeks. That's yours. Remember him, appropriate it, and walk in it. I believe that's what God is saying here today. This idea of crowning us. Praise God. Go ahead and uh, prepare your cup uh, uh, and the bread. First, take the bread if you would. Father, in Jesus' name, let us not forget all the benefits. Father, make us aware of what you crowned and surround us with. Father, we want all of it. We want all the benefits of being sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we honor you right now as we break bread at the communion table. And I remind you, as we partake today, there's healing at this table today. This is a healing meal. If you're dealing with something, okay, I want you to believe God for it today. Just because he did this uh, two millenniums ago doesn't mean he stopped doing it. It never stopped. That's why the scripture says, by his stripes we're already healed. All the verb tense in the scriptures, my, my God says, apply all your needs. Doesn't mean he just did it for the Philippians. He did it for us. As remembers today, I want you to take hold of it in Jesus' name. On the, day, on the night before he was betrayed, he took bread. He broke it. Go ahead and break it between your fingers. And Jesus said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. Second, prepare your cup if you would. Just a thought, I'm going to throw it out to you. No matter where 
the lifeblood is pumping. And you can tell the connotation of that. There's life in the blood. And because it flows through your veins, you have that life and that more abundantly. And unbroken access to da a Papa Daddy in heaven. And he crowns you with everything we talked about today. And the same Mary took the cup, he blessed it, gave his disciples, said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for the remission of sins. Let's partake right now. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's all stand for the blessing. God, raise your hands to God. And we don't say this lightly every time. We, we wish it upon you. And we ask God to continue to do this. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant us peace. And all those who believe that, say amen. Remember, Sunday morning, 8.30, 10.30. We look forward to being here as Bishop Bishop continues to minister in this series about from favor from Amos. I'm excited to hear that. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. <laughs>